Hey there folks, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Mafex Hush Blue and Grey Batman. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright guys, so to start off with, we're going to take a look at the accessories. We get quite a few unique accessories with this figure compared to, uh, when compared to some other Batman figures. But first up, some of the lesser unique pieces we get. A few different attachments for our Mafex base. Um, get these newer style clamps with the crotch piece or the uh, regular bit. See, this kind of just slides on there like that. That way, it's a different style of clamp as to one that's as to the one that's on the figure. This is more of your standard style Mafex base, and then you get all these attachments. This is the re-release figure, uh, or reissued rather. I'm pretty certain that the original one wouldn't have come with this. Um, because I'm pretty sure the figure's maybe four or five years old now, I'm not sure. <clears throat> but you also get the, uh, the, um, hand, uh, brackets or whatever you want to call these, I don't know. I'm pretty certain that these wouldn't have been a part of the original either. This is more of a recent thing that Mafex is doing. So, as far as I'm aware, those are the only differences that between the reissued version and the original release. Maybe the paint application is slightly different. I don't think anything else is, though. But as far as the rest of the accessories, you get some unique stuff here like this. Um, this grapnel hook. This one is one that's being used. This is a metal piece right here. I do have a slight angle on it. It's not that big of a deal, though. But this can plug right into either one of your grapnel gun hands, which I like that it's molded into the hand. I appreciate that. And it's just a little metal piece right there to keep it nice and strong. Looks very sharp. And you get a short one as well. One that either has not been launched yet or is uh, just starting to get launched. However you look at it, I suppose. So those are pretty cool. Same head on both of them. You get this kind of... Uh, chrome silver paint you get the batarangs you get two sets of batarangs here you get uh two uh of these more bat logo style batarangs painted in nice silver which is pretty cool and then you get these ones that remind me more of a classic design ones that look more like an actual boomerang so that's pretty cool again nice paint work on these I do like that. You get a couple of interchangeable heads. First up, you get the Bruce Wayne head, which is only available with this figure. You don't get it with the black and gray variant. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm also not a big fan of the way the lips were painted. He's He's got no lips, and it's like just a line in there. It looks very strange. <clears throat> in some lighting, I think this could look okay. But I'm not the biggest fan of what we got going on here, so. But it's got some nice paintwork throughout the hair and stuff. Some gray, uh, bluish dry uh, oh my gosh, blue dry brushing. So that's not bad. And then you get the stern Batman head. Not painted perfectly, the eyes are a little bit messed up and the placement of the skin tone's a little bit off. My personal favorite head is the one that's currently on the figure. And then as far as the hand goes, you get a pair of what I'm assuming are battering holding hands molded in. Again, you get the grapnel hook hands, which I really like. And they're not just a mirror of each other. You can see that it's slightly different to account for the orientation of the grapnel gun. You get these what appear to be like fist hands, but they have a slight gap in them for your batterings. Which you can see right here. We kind of just wedged it in. Actually take this off. Oh. Let's move on to the other one. It's a little bit strange. I don't know how I feel about this. It's like, this is not really how I would have him hold the battering. I would have it in the actual, like, inside the fingers. 
or like between the fingers so i don't really like this hand or the way that it's sculpted for this but i guess it kind of works it's all right <clears throat> pair of trigger figure hands which I don't know why you need these, but you got these. All you, you can use these for the batterings as well, actually. Wedge it in there like that. Or you can go between the fingers. Yeah, I'd actually like that more, so that's nice. Then you get a pair of relaxed hands and a pair of grabby hands so that's nice and then of course on the figure you get a pair of fists and you get this uh angry head and if you haven't noticed already this pose is based off of the um moment in the book or the series rather where uh batman punches superman i think you have to get the superman figure in order to get the kryptonite ring hand so that's a bit unfortunate but it's pretty cool and I have the other hand kind of supporting the rest of the cape. So that's how that's going. But let's knock this guy off of here. Get him standing straight up and down. Uh, I was aware of this dude's issues before I picked him up, of course. But I mean, I still think he's a really solid figure overall. I think he's got a couple of things... That are a bit strange. I'm, I think the belt is a little bit too big. And also mine's um, loose. I did that on purpose. Because um, I was already kind of swapping belts around to see what it would look like. I want to use one of my Arkham City belts. Or not Arkham City. Arkham Asylum belts on the figure. But I can't find it currently. I don't know where it is. Uh, but I think that would look really cool. But one of the big issues that this guy has for a lot of people is the size of the cape. I can see where they're coming from. It's a little bit frustrating. But I can't complain too much just because I think capes on figures are very annoying anyway. Um, that's why I love mostly messing around with my Spider-Man figures because I feel like capes just get in the way all the time. And it kind of ruins the uh, the playability for me sometimes. I don't know why. It's just kind of my own weird thing. So capes always bother me. So it's kind of hard for me to um, kind of pick on this cape by itself. Because I have a problem with most of them. So, whether they're plastic or fabric. But I think overall this guy looks really nice. I appreciate the size of it because it makes it different. It's, you know, got a really nice shape to it. And it's got a couple of wires in there. It's got four wires, so that's pretty cool. I think the thing that I have the issue with more... I feel like this keeps going out of focus. But the thing that I have the issue with more... Is actually the way that the cowl... Neck and cape kind of connect to each other i'm not sure if i like the way that the uh, way this is set up in the comics it would just be a smooth transition it's not like a separate piece like you see in the films so i don't know how else they would have done it but that's i feel like this piece is what my major problem is like with the nightfall one that mafex is releasing here shortly it's got an actual sculpted cape texture onto it so it looks more like a natural transition. This one doesn't have any of that sculpting. So I don't know if that's what it is. If maybe that would help. I'm not too sure. Or maybe just a different shape. I feel like maybe it's a little bit too big. I don't know what it is, but this is my more, my main problem with the figures. Just this area. And I don't really have any good ideas for them to fix it. Like I said in the comics, it's always just a smooth transition, so there's not really anything that they can do about it. Whereas a movie figure, it's always a separate piece when they're designing the suit, so there's room for a natural transition, or at least an accurate transition. But I think this dude looks pretty good overall. I think his proportions are pretty solid. I think he looks better without the belt on, because you kind of see that natural transition between the waist, the hips, and the thighs. The belt, I think, is just a little bit too big and throws things off. Even though I'm a fan of the big kind of carpenter-style belt. Um, I don't know what it is about this one, but it just kind of throws it off for me. 
but I like the width of the shoulders. He's got some nice medium arms and legs. Overall, he looks pretty solid. He's got some nice shading throughout the figure as well. I really like that. And this grimacing head is my probably my favorite part of the whole figure. I really, really, really like this head. And luckily for me, it's painted the best out of all of them, so that's pretty nice. Big fan of it. But yeah, there's a, I mean, there's a lot you can do with the cape. I think it could use probably one more wire here in the back. And then it would be all set. But there's a couple of different things you can do. I like to tuck the cape behind the, the fins back here to kind of get it to sit around the shoulders, but then kind of tame it back. That's something I like to do. I also would like to get it kind of posed on one of my gargoyle bases. One right here. Get it kind of posed on one of these because the cape is so long that it goes just straight past his feet like it does in Batman Begins or whatever. That style of dramatic cape. So you can get him standing there and then just have the cape dangling straight down. So that's something I would like to play around with depending on where I uh, decide to display him. I would love to get a lot of the other figures in the series, but I mean, I think they've done like 15 figures for Batman Hush so far. Um, the ones that I think are probably the most important to me anyway, just because they feel really close to the definitive versions of the characters, is probably Nightwing, Joker, Harley Quinn, I guess Catwoman too. And uh, I would really like to see a Tim Drake Robin. And then you got characters like Scarecrow and Rid Riddler. They're my favorite Batman villains. There's so many figures that Mafex is putting out. It's very, very, very exciting. I mean, even characters like Hush and Huntress, they all bo both look really good. If I had the ability to, I would get them all. And a lot of them are hard to find now, so. But if they did a Tim Drake Robin, I would definitely pick that up. And even the blue and gray one. The only figure from the wave that I don't really care for is like the scuba suit Batman. But I hear that that cape is a little bit smaller, so maybe it's worth picking up to uh, swap out the suit or swap out the capes and then, you know, maybe sell it on eBay or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, let's go into the articulation. <clears throat> it's kind of your standard Mafex. I feel like he's got a, or I'm pretty sure he's got a, a very similar build to the Cyclops Jim Lee figure. You got a double uh, ball peg for the head and a, probably the neck as well. So with those combined, you can get the figure to look up this much. Down this much. All kinds of nuance and attitude in there. Very, very nice. Rotation, of course. Then you get your butterfly joints. Which the way Mafex does it, it's just a ball inside of there. So it's more like a cap to kind of fill in the gap over anything else you get a lot of rotation a lot of up and down movement your arms can go all the way up full rotation bicep swivel very nice double jointed elbows and then you get ball joint for the wrist so you can get that in any sort of configuration and then you get a waist and <clears throat> a waist and diaphragm joint and those combined you can get the figure to crunch down this much maybe a little bit more if the belt wasn't in the way, I'm not sure. Doesn't really feel like it. Get him to move back pretty far. And of course you get dipping on both of those and rotation on both of them as well. The legs have a slight drop down. They can move out about that far. They kind of kick up a little bit. About, about straight out. You can see we have a little bit of paint rub on the thigh right there. A little bit unfortunate. Okay, so he's a little bit limited in his um, his legs, just kind of kicking out, but with the uh, torso in conjunction with that, you might be able to get where you want to go. You have thigh swivel. Oh, you also move back a little bit. But a thigh swivel, double jointed knees work out pretty nicely. And then you ball joint for the ankle, you have rotation and they can move down this far, up that far. Ankle pivot, of course, and toe articulation. 
I think the only thing that's a little bit off about his uh, his proportions is his lower leg is a little bit too long. Um, it's it just goes past his butt a little too far. It's probably my only thing. I would just make the thighs a little bit longer and shorten those calves a little bit or ankles. But yeah, guys, I think this dude is pretty solid. I Since I picked him up from Big Bad Toy Store, he went on pre-order and then the pre-order sold out. And then it appears to be he went back up for pre-order. So if you guys have been wanting to get this figure, I definitely recommend it. He's not perfect. He's got a few different issues. But I mean, overall, this dude's a menace absolute monster of a figure and i feel like just getting the cape kind of like you see how quickly i just kind of tamed that back a little bit you know it takes some nuance and some finessing but overall i don't think the cape is as big an issue as folks made it out to be for so many years now and like i said i'm not a big fan of capes to begin with when it comes to figures it's just always obnoxious but like you can see i just pretty much got that tamed back you know it just takes a little nuance a little pulling pushing Get it to where you want to be and there's freaking cat hair all over the place apologies for that but overall i think this is pretty close to a definitive blue and gray batman at least a modern one and it's definitely a definitive jim lee style batman if you ask me especially with this head that just screams jim lee's artwork to me of course the other ones do as well but i don't know i just really like this angry head I'm a big fan of the way Jim Lee draws Batman angry. And that just... It's ripped right out of the pages. But you get... Just to go into a little bit more depth before we head out of here. You can see that the Bat emblem is... Sculpted in, which is very nice. Reminds me a lot of the way that... The 2006 Lego Batman series... Did the... Did the uh, Bat emblem... For the black and gray Batman... And then also you get accurate treads for the boots, which is pretty cool. So yeah, guys, I mean, I think this is pretty solid. I'm having a really hard time with the camera here today, folks. I apologize if it's been going in and out of focus like crazy. Um, I don't want to make this video too much longer. But I definitely recommend. There's, there's a lot of cool things about this guy. Um... And if you haven't gotten one of these, this is the Toy Biz Spider-Man Gargoyle Base. Uh, this has a few modifications. I took the whole gears out of it and all that, but and I want to sculpt this to kind of seal it up. But you got to get yourself some sort of Gargoyle Base. Or you got, this is a knockoff, but you got the kind of, well, I guess it would be hard for Batman to stand on this. You'd have to do some finagling. Or possibly have like a stand, a Mafex stand behind it. And then the cape covers it just to make it look like he's standing on this. Something like that. You gotta get yourself some something building gargoyle related to get your Batman looking cool. Utilize this nice long cape and have it draped down. I think it would be really nice. Or you can kinda do your best to replicate the famous Jim Lee artwork of uh, Batman standing on the, uh, the gargoyle. But yeah, with all that being said, I think this dude's pretty solid. You guys don't need to tell me. He's definitely one of the best comic book based Batman out there. Especially Jim Lee Hush Batman. The best, in my opinion. He's only got a little bit of competition. And that's, you know, uh, DC McFarlane. I can't think of any other Hush Batman in this scale. Well, McFarlane's not in this scale. But I can't think of any other Hush Jim Lee Batman that comes close. I don't remember any Mattel figure off the top of my head. I'm sure there was. I know there was DC Directs out there, but they don't compare to this in my opinion when it comes to just a full-on articulated Batman. So I'm glad that I have this guy. And now they're doing the Nightfall one, which is really cool. I would like to see them maybe do a... Uh... Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what else I'd like to see. I'm mostly just a blue and gray kind of Batman, and they're doing my two favorite versions. Maybe an, uh, a Neil Adams blue and gray Batman, but that's so similar to Nightfall. I don't see where you'd really be able to divert, mostly being the head sculpt. Uh, but yeah, guys, enough rambling on. If you guys enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe. 
notification bell. All that would be greatly appreciated if you decide to do so. And of course, until next time, true believers.